Whether you call them smallies, bronze backs, or brown bass, this much is certain. Pound for pound, smallmouth bass offer some of the best action in fresh water. Yes, these bronze prize fighters pack a big punch, putting rods and drags to the test. Peeling line as they run for the deep, then break the surface, sometimes all within a matter of seconds. But first, you gotta find them. In early season, using your eyes, today's electronics, and run and gun search baits like the Rapala X Rep or Storm 360 GT can make pretty quick work of finding fish, whether they're roaming on the flats, rocky reefs, or points. Then once you find multiple smallies on a spot, it's hard to beat crawfish imitators like soft plastic tubes. And as the sun warms the water, drawing crawfish and bait fish into the open, top waters can also produce, even during the early season while water temps are still pretty chilly. On today's edge, Al and Dan Linder go insane for early season smallmouth bass. Fishing the waters of Quetico Provincial Park near Branches Seine River Lodge, nestled in the heart of Northwest Ontario's sunset country. <laughs> Look at that, Al. Just let me measure up. That's beautiful, man. Oh, you got me. You got by me. By a consider. little bit. By a, by a hair. Hey, you want some fantastic fishing? You got to come up to Branches, you know, in sunset country in Northwest Ontario, and you can have, you know, Days like this. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. I am really, really, really excited. We are loaded for bear. We got pike stuff, we got musky stuff, we got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff. And right now, Al and I are gonna go chase smallmouth bass. We're in probably one of the most diverse areas in all of Sunset Country in Northwest Ontario, the Atacokan region. And hey, we come up here every year. Why? Simple. Lots of water and lots of fish all kinds of fish and every year we pick a couple new lakes that we haven't been on just to explore we're on one of those bodies of water right now we're at branches seine river lodge obviously on the seine river it's got all kinds of fish in it and when i called in the other day to talk to to, to Lori and her husband to find out what's the water temperature what's the bite looking like she says boy oh boy we're really catching a lot of smallmouth my ears perked up like this i said smallmouth you know, we're gonna do a television show. You want us to talk a little bit about the smallmouth? She says, oh, please do. There's more interest in smallmouth fishing up here than ever before. That's to right up our alley. Put the boat in, Dano. This is the first of several trips up into Canada for Al and I this year. And one thing I always enjoy is meeting the lodge owners. They always have some fascinating story. Take Quentin here. His dad lived in the bush for 20 years as a prospector. I can't imagine that. I thought camping for a weekend was a long time. Well, um, this, this lodge actually was established in uh, the early 30s, and no one knows the, a lot about the initial uh, couple decades of it, but, uh, but it was around uh, a couple of log cabins put up and just a small operation. Um, there was, it changed hands a couple of times, and my parents, uh, my dad was a prospector, and he lived in the bush for 20 years in a tent, and he was wanting to kind of grow some roots, especially after I came along, um, and he always stayed a lot at a lot of fishing lodges while he was working, so, although he wasn't much of a fisherman or a hunter, he wanted to kind of um, have a lodge, so, uh, so he had the opportunity, he bought this sight unseen, my parents bought this sight unseen, they flipped a coin between this and another one um, and, and just went with this one, which was quite fortunate, I think. Um, and then they uh, moved here in 1967. Was, that was the year they purchased the camp. And they, uh, there was no road in then. Right up until that point, there was a, it was a train-in camp. Some fly in, but for the most part, guests came in from the States, uh, got on a small passenger train out of Fort Francis and uh, came to the uh, a trail that walked into our camp. Um, in 1965, Highway 11 went through, so it was a new, a new uh, artery in the area. So when my dad bought it in 1967, he put the road in. So we became a drive-in camp. Uh, it was all American plan until uh, and all guided until my dad had all the guides wind up in jail one day, and he got rid of the guided trips for several decades. Um, they were all in jail and he had to go bail them out and terminate them at the same time, I guess. Um, so they ran it for 30 some odd years and they were looking to retire uh, and they approached me. I was working and, and I had met Lori and we had a family. Uh, I was in Southern Ontario and we took over the camp in 2001. 
So, uh, so since then we've uh, we've done a lot of changes, and uh, but but there was it was a really good base for us to for us to build from. Really good fishing, really good, just the perfect location in in every way, and uh, and it was just a matter of us. We've had the opportunity now to take that and and go to the next level with it. We're in an ideal location for all kinds of wilderness activities. Um, our, our, our main focus is fishing, um, and we are in the center of the Seine River chain of lakes, which is just a perfect location. We've got a lot of great fishing right off of our docks. No need to, uh, no need to travel anywhere to get really, really good smallmouth bass, walleye, pike, perch, uh, and we're starting to see crappie as well. Uh, we have nearby lakes, a number of nearby lakes with lake trout as well that we have boats on. Uh, but that's that's the core of our business and our focus. Uh, we also do hunting trips, and we also are full-service Quetico canoe trip outfitter. So uh, I always joke with our guests that we they start out with aluminum canoes, they go to Kevlar canoes, then they go to a cabin. So so we try to cover all their bases as they progress through their lives. So so we get we try to keep them coming for for whatever type of trip they want. Uh, we have nine cabins. We built three in the last two years, put in all the amenities, made sure we've got the nice higher end beds. Uh, sleeping is very important to people when they're on vacation, so you want something that's comfortable for them, they can get a good night's rest. So the next morning they're refreshed to go out and go fishing for the day. What are you throwing? Jerk bait. X wrap, good. When, when we're looking, there ain't a better thing you could throw. You know that uh, the water temperature is around 65, so we know that those smallmouth are in and around that spawn time. And Al and I have opted to choose secondary points. So when you take a look at this map, you got a main lake, then you got the main point that sticks out into the main lake. Then you got secondary points. We're starting from those secondary points and working our way back, because that's where we think the smallmouth are going to be spawning. And nothing works better playing show and tell than a jerk bait like that. Because the fish will come up, take a peek at it, and you'll uh, you'll know they're around and then you can slow down if you want to. Got him, boom. Oh. Dan oh Dan oh. You got him on the tube, see? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Nice fish, Boy, nice fish. Solar powered, look at that yeah. guy rip. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. Lund Boats has two smoking deals for making memories this summer. Lund 1650 Rebel XS is an incredible boat at an incredible price. This boat is filled with features like side and center rod lockers, aerated live well, and a heavy duty trailer with fold away tongue. Add the optional flip up seating and ski pylon for family fun. Or choose Lund 1625 Fury XL. It has all the fish catching features you'd expect from Lund at a jaw dropping price. For more information and a free catalog, go to LundBoats.com. Whoever coined the phrase, less is more, wasn't much of a fisherman. He probably talked himself into a V6 when he could have got a V8, settled for 100 horsepower instead of 250, and went home empty-handed when he should have doubled down. Introducing the Solix series. From mega imaging to auto chart live to cross touch, Solix has all of fishing's most innovative technologies on our biggest screen ever. Because more is more. Only from Humminbird. This segment is brought to you by Northwest Ontario. There's no place like this. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. You know, that tube, that's one of the baits that 
smallmouth fishermen got to have all the time. In fact, it's probably the most universal uh, producing soft bait for smallmouth all year long. You don't go anywhere, yeah, you know, anywhere without a tube on if you're a smallmouth fisherman. Two favorite baits for me, the most consistent baits probably in a year that I keep on a rod all the time for, for smallmouth, it's a tube and an X-wrap. <laughs> Those two baits, if I'm smallmouth fishing any time of the year, they're on. You know, we're learning this lake, like we said this morning, what, you know, we've never been here before. And with all the wood and everything, we're, we're kind of cautious how we're moving around through here, but where Branch is located is perfect for what we're doing. The lodge is sitting in the middle of the lake, basically between two dams. And there's a number of lakes that make up the system with narrows and current between it. A lot of interesting water, but they're sitting in a perfect location you know, where you can go any way you want in the lake. That's a neat thing. So we pick one direction today. Yeah, you know, tomorrow we're gonna go in the other direction and get a feel for it. Should have been another one back in, 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 in there. Did you work that hole? There we go, there we go. There we go. Got, Got him. him. Huh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Look at him, look at him bulldogging around. Yeah, Al, you're Grubbing. talking. Yep, look at him. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hot feet there, look at that. Look at that guy go. It's rubbed up good. What a nice fish, man. Yep. Al's talking about that warm weather and these fish lighten up, lighten up in the afternoon. And they sure do, man. And why is that? Well, sometimes it's because, oh, look at that guy, a beautiful fish. Sometimes it's because the craws come out, out of the rocks. And that little tube right there is a perfect imitation for a crawdad, you know, but let's take a look at some of the science behind crawdads. I think you'll find this interesting. You know, I gotta be honest. When I started digging in and doing research about crawdads for this show, I was blown away and I stumbled across a research project that was done in 1998 by Virginia Tech and Earthwave Productions. I figured I'd show it to you guys. Check it out online for the full show. Scientists refer to crayfishes as keystone species because they play a key role in aquatic ecosystems and serve as a vital link in the food chain. Crayfish to me are an amazing animal because they eat such a wide variety of organisms. And it's hard to pinpoint another animal that consumes so many different food sources. For example, they'll eat rotting uh, leaves and twigs and that type of material that we refer to as detritus. They eat animal flesh. Insects are a large part of their diet when they're young. They'll even eat rotting fish flesh from dead fish. They'll eat other crayfish. They'll eat live plants, they'll eat uh, algae, another plant, but, but uh, single-celled plants. Some people suspect that they may even eat microscopic organisms that are in the rotting leaves and twigs on the bottom or in the water column. They have the ability to filter water through their gills and collect food items out of that water. One of the richest diversities of crayfishes found in the world occurs in the United States, east of the Rocky Mountains, where some 320 species inhabit a wide range of freshwater environments, including lakes and streams, springs, swamps, and even underground waters or aquifers, where the elusive cave crayfish is sometimes found. Just think, this documentary was done 20 years ago. That's amazing. I think the reason that the smallmouth populations in these Canadian lakes do so well is partially because of the spread of the crawfish. They are a plentiful, adaptable, constant, stable food source. In these lakes up here, that afternoon bite is always better than the morning bite early in the year like this, always. Come summertime, it's a little different story. But you let that water warm up a little bit and these lakes are loaded with craws and in the morning those craws, they're staying tucked tucked away under the rocks. You know, when that sun comes out, they come out, start crawling around a little bit, 
and that's when the smallmouth, they know they, they're programmed to feed in the afternoon early in the year when those craws come out from under those rocks. You'll see them laying up on top of the rocks and everything, and those smallmouth know it. So it's shout time. Go, got him. Good one. Good one. Good, good one. Nice. Yeah? Stop working right now! Look outside. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass! Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. This is my spot. Right here. My thinking spot. My fishing spot. My spot, not yours. This is where I go. For release. And for catch and release. Where no one can find me. And fish can't hide from me. This is my spot. And I ain't going nowhere. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. Sifo Motor Treatment congratulates Super Gas Champ Jim Davis for winning the 2017 Lucas Oil NHRA Nationals. Help your engine run smoother and last longer with Sifo Motor Treatment. Just pour it in. Sifo Motor Treatment works to clean, lubricate, and protect your entire fuel system, no matter what moves you. Sifo Motor Treatment is safe and easy to use. Make the proven choice. Sifo Motor Treatment, available everywhere automotive products are sold. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. You know, really this time of the year, when we come up here, what, what we're fishing is, is late stage. A actually, I don't think there's no pre-spawn. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, most of these fish have spawned already. Some might be on beds. I'm not sure yet. A lot of them are post-spawn. We had some that had rubs that were still bedding. So, you know, the bite is a little so-so. We're covering a lot of water, but yeah, 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 you know, we got a, an array of baits that we'll use this time of the year. And uh, uh, they're all rigged on different rods for different purposes. But you know what I want to, whoa, whoa, what I want to talk about for a second? Fishing line. Everybody's interested in fishing line, right? Let's talk about the three main things, because I'll, uh, there's a reason why we use mono, a reason why we use floral, there's a reason why we use braid, and there's a reason why braid and floral is used on different presentations. Let me explain. What's my favorite line? That is one of the most often asked questions we get, and honestly, there's no right or wrong answer. Line can be a very complex subject, so I just want to break it down to the basics, something easy to understand. One is braid which has no stretch. Floral carbon, which has minimal amount of stretch and is almost invisible underwater. And then there's monofilament, which has the most stretch of all. Now, like I said, we're rigged with many rods for this pre-spawn smallmouth fishing, but here's my favorite combo for jerk baiting and a little bit about why we use certain line for some of the presentations we'll be using today. When I'm X wrapping, I like using a six foot, 10 inch, medium power, extra fast action St. Croix Bass X spinning rod and a Daiwa 2500 RG spinning reel spooled up with Suffolk 10 pound 832 braid and a four foot shocker of 10 pound test Suffolk floral carbon. The braid has no stretch and allows you to get the maximum action from the lure and the floral shocker is nearly invisible underwater. Now when we're fishing with a tube on the bottom that is when floral comes into play. The see-through quality, it sinks, 
has minimal stretch and abrasion resistant characteristics are a perfect complement to a lure that smallmouth get to study up close before striking. Lastly is mono. When we are fishing with the topwater bait, mono is mandatory. The floating characteristics of monofilament are a great attribute to this presentation. Mono keeps the front of the lure up on the top of the water where it needs to be to get the maximum action out of any surface bait. And the stretchy characteristics allow that fish to jump and the line acts like a rubber band, keeping constant pressure on the fish and you don't tear the hooks out as easy. Now these are just examples of the situations where we use the three different line styles and it can be adapted to many different presentations. Pretty darn good one, Dano. Yep. Yeah, they're coming in, coming in, you know, eating top water. You know, it's interesting, those fish, they may be eating on crawdads, but you, uh, don't have to, you don't have to have bottom scratching baits yeah. and they... Whoa, come here. Oh. Nice, that's Look at a that beautiful one, huh? one. Top water fish. Yep. Got oh, the afternoon, it, it's lighting them up. I'll tell you one thing about this fishery. The average fish here has been really, really big on the seine. The average size fish is extremely good. We have not caught a small smallmouth. Yeah, yeah, you know, they're all big fish. Uh, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Day one, it's been a lot, a lot of fun. Look at that. You know, it's interesting, Al's got that fish on a topwater bait. We got some on tubes, which, you know, imitate crawdads. And the interesting thing is, smallmouth can be primarily feeding on crawdads, but they don't hit baits that are necessarily on the bottom all the time. They'll come up and hit topwater baits. They'll hit stuff that's swimming across, but they're, you know, they're focusing in on crawdads. The detail on my Helix 12 is something else. They call this mega imaging. It's a huge step uh, of what we ha had from side imaging before a step up, the quality up. The images are so incredibly clear. You know, this lake I don't have a, a map on, so I'm running 2D sonar on here, and I've got my side imaging. When I run side imaging, I'm running left and right on 60 at 60 feet. But the detail is so incredible. Look at the side of that boulder there. I mean, you get you get readouts like I've never seen before on, on side imaging. Just amazing, amazing. You know, in Al's boat here, we got two forms of anchoring. We've got the Ultrex up front, which has spot lock on it, which is it'll lock you within five feet and keep you right on this spot. And then we got the talons in the back. When you get real shallow, the talons are extremely handy because it doesn't disturb the bottom. And then if you get out a little bit deeper, we use that spot lock. So each one has a time and a place. Got I got him. You got a double. double. Oh, yeah, Mine's there a goes. pike. Look at that. <laughs> Cold weather got you down? <laughs> Didn't think so. In the Midwest, we don't fear weather. We embrace it, we live outdoors, we work, and we play outdoors. We hike, we hunt, and we fish. This is a winter wonderland, and we own it. We were born in the Midwest. We are outdoors. We are Mills Fleet Farm. There's no place like this. Yes! <laughs> yeah, Linder here for Angling Buzz. I'm Tony Road. Frank Rolston. Lee Talkett here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. The Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bath like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay. Lake Sakakwe. Lake Winnie Region. Northern Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. Check us out on the web current up-to-date fishing info from the best anglers in the Midwest. Learn from the pros at anglingbuzz.com. Can't get enough Angling Edge? Wish you could learn more than you saw on TV? You can. Angling Edge DVDs dive deep into fish catching techniques that couldn't fit on air. It's like extra innings or overtime of Angling Edge. Choose from dozens of titles featuring your favorite freshwater fish. Purchase five DVDs at the incredible low price of $25. That's five DVDs for just 25 bucks. Purchase two sets and get free shipping too. 
Visit anglingedge.com to place your order. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. You've got a oh, double. Oh, yeah, Mine's there you a go. Look at that. <laughs> no, mine got a good Look smaller. at this one. Good double, double, double. Double, double, double. Whoa. Nice. Look at that. That's Canadian fishing, right? Yeah, look at look that. Look at that. Big brown swirlers. Double header. Who's, who's got the biggest one? I don't know. Uh, I think I do. I deserve uh, it. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that fun? Boy, that is tough to beat, man. Oh, man. Tough to I gotta beat. get mine in the boat here. Okay. You and get yours in. I, I, I gotta come back and check you out. I don't know if yours is bigger or not. I got a feeling I'm gonna acquiesce to him. Right. Whoop. Come here, baby. Yeah, his is big. You don't even have to pull him. I'm gonna give it to you. Look at that. Let, Al. Me, let me measure up. <laughs> Beautiful, man. Oh, you got me. You got by me. By a consider. little bit. By a, by a hair. Hey, you want some fantastic fishing? You gotta come up to branches, you know, in sunset country in Northwest Ontario, and you can have, you know, days like this. Hey, in my hometown paper, every Friday, there's a page that comes out, it's titled Opinion, and everybody shares their opinion. Everybody's got an opinion, correct? Well, one of the sections in here is reader opinion. And I really enjoyed go, going to sections like this. It just gives you a feel of how the neighbors think. Let me read short and sweet. Where's the outcry? My wife, a neighbor lady, and I went to the Pequot High School to see the play Legally Blind. We have been there many times before, having, enjoy, having enjoyed the productions. This one was different. What struck me was the loose way they used the name of God. It seems very wrong to me that God is kept out of our schools when there could be good come from his presence, but there is no outcry when his name is used like it was in this play. I had enough of it by the intermission. I would think that it would be up to the school board to review what is allowed into the school. Have we rejected God so much that the only way we speak his name in our schools is in jest or worse? Gary. Phenomenal. I could have wrote that thing. I read that thing and said, I could have said that. I could have read that thing. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of the guy that he and his wife and his friend, they got up and they walked out. That's what more of us have to do when you see this kind of garbage in front and you get mad. I can feel my blood pressure going up right now, so I got to watch what I'm going to say because I could get in trouble. So I got to calm down a little bit. But I'm so proud he had the courage to get up and walk out. I had enough of this trash. And you know what else you do? Tell the powers to be why you're walking out. That's the only way we're going to end this insanity or at least calm it down. I got to calm down a little bit. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.